I absolutely love the standard 18 to 55 from Fujifilm, but what with the absolute lack of travel, days out and so on over the last year, thanks to you know what, it hasn't really had much time out the house. So I thought I'd bring it with me on my walk around Sutton Park today and see how it fares as a video vlog style shooter, this time with the X-T4, this time with auto ISO in play, and it's definitely a brighter day today, albeit still quite nippy, which means cold <laughs> for some of you out there who are wondering. Yeah, let's see how it fares. First thing that I'm very grateful for with the XF 18 to 55 is that it has OIS. Now I am using the XT4 at the moment with the IBIS on as well. No disc because I can't afford to crop in the image anymore. I'm already holding it almost as far out as I possibly can. And I've had to pop on an ND filter to try and stay shooting wide open. Might even be a bit too much of an ND filter in this instance, but never mind. How is the OIS faring with the IBIS? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's not a gimbal, but what do you reckon? The lens weighs around 340 grams, so does that sound like a doable weight for you? I prefer lighter, more compact, but I have used it on numerous trips and really enjoyed it. It hasn't stopped me at all, although I have been using it on the T20, T30, those kind of bodies, but I'm really enjoying having IBIS. So while I probably won't travel with this T4, I may travel with the S10. I wonder what Fujifilm have in store for us on the weight front, but as this lens goes, yeah, very doable, at least for me. Testing with the onboard mics now. We just want to see if there's any motor noise that's off-putting. For the most part, I'm using external mics anyway, as for 99% of this video. But for those run and gun shoot moments, opportunities, especially when you're traveling, you might not have the mics or be bothered with the mics, you know, you just want to let it run. Let's see how it is when I move about a bit. I mean, I'm not really. That is a really weird bit of focusing. <laughs> but could you hear anything? I know there's others that are really obvious, but yeah, that's fine. This is not a comfortable angle to be moving around in. A little face detection test then. I want to do it wide open so that, you know, when I get closer, it's more obvious to you. But as I move back and hit myself, I've not framed this well at all, have I? But I think it serves a purpose. Is it following me? The little box seems to be following me perfectly fine, but let me get into place. What do you reckon? I think the distinction not too clear, too much blown highlights. This is a bit of a more random test than usual, but how is it faring? Because you know, when you're traveling out and about, you might not be <laughs> paying too much attention. You might not get the <laughs> best conditions, <sighs> you know. It's not too bad, is it? Okay, we'll take this huge. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I wore better footwear today as well. Hmm, face detection. Seems all right. That was a bit weird. Definitely went a bit funky there. I suppose it's not always picking me up so easy. Although this scene is, you know, there's a lot of green going on. <laughs> and I hit that again. <laughs> That's enough of that. When it comes to stuff like this, you know, and travel, scenery, certain landscapes, bit of fun, nice all-rounder, the image quality is absolutely fine. I did feel like on some of those clips, I should have maybe used a warmer film simulation. I was struggling a little bit. Oops, sorry about the wobble. This is clearly no <laughs> gimbal work. 
Of course, I prefer a wider aperture, but I can live with this 2.8 at the 18 end for this kind of use. It's more than fine, but I would recommend getting an ND filter for those times when you just can't get wide open. I'm actually testing auto ISO, as I said, with these video clips, so we'll see how that goes. And I've got some very awkward shadow coming across my face. So yeah, anyway, let us know what you think in the comments below. One negative for me is the focal length for vlogging. Basically, the rest of the zoom range is wasted. But of course, as a travel lens, as a day-to-day -day standard, 18 to 55 is very nice, as indeed is the 18 to 135, although that comes with its extra challenges, as I'm finding. <laughs> what is this noise, really? supposed to be a nice quiet park I'm clearly <sighs> back to the roadside anyway I would prefer it to be wider and that got me thinking that I'd be inclined to pocket a 15 to 45 for random travel vlog style shooting we took one to Amsterdam and also to London albeit on the XA5 which is a very nice light camera but the t40s10 much better video shooters of course so i want to revisit that cheap little zoom i really don't like the power zoom but somebody said this on the internet actually <laughs> just think of it as a 15 mil 3.5 and have it done yeah why not i think it's worth it get a second hand one for about 100 pounds throw that in the bag not a problem and now i've got a crow annoying me <laughs> Everybody wants a piece of the action and it's only supposed to be a random test video. How am I, how am I supposed to edit this now? <laughs> anyway, it's mainly just for me. <laughs> if you get something out of it, let us know in the comments below. I really do think it's a great little all-rounder. But you know, I've constantly got that battle as a pro that also likes to travel a light. I want a faster aperture, but yeah, I want smaller, more compact. Anyway, it's a lovely all-rounder, and I think even for these random video tests, it's definitely been enjoyable. Although, to be honest, I've probably enjoyed being out in this fresh air in this huge, lovely space in Sutton Park. Actually, I don't normally come to this side, and I think I've walked through a bit of a golf course, so... If I sound a bit funny, I might have been hit on the head with a golf ball. Don't you just hate it when you set up a fairly nice shot and then it just gets invaded and the people just won't go away? I mean, we're definitely getting closer to my perfect travel setup. Not necessarily with this T4, maybe the S10. Love the XC4, but I really want that Ibis, you know, for certain things. As we always say, shoot with what you've got until you can't shoot with it anymore. Of course, it's not a perfect lens for you vloggers, but for travel video shooters such as myself, it's a step in a better direction, at least for my tastes. Now, is the 16 to 50 or the 15 to 45 that I've got here more suitable for my style of travel? Maybe. The IQ and build of this lens, I'm doing this because we're shooting with it right now, of course, is clearly a step above those two, but it is a personal choice at the end of the day. Remember, we aren't talking about pro video, and as you saw, mostly it was handheld and very rough and ready. So what feels more comfortable to me might not be most comfortable to you. And yes, we will be featuring the XS10 in a few videos very soon. However, for now, I'm still dreaming of that tiny, 10 mil f2 over to you fujifilm what's happening for now let us know what you shoot with in the comments below make sure to subscribe and i'll see you very soon